because it could get interesting. <laughs> I'm going to give Cecile an opportunity to share something. Just because I like to talk. Now, I, I just was, when, when the kids and their, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> it's real spiritual. Um, no, when the parents and the kids were up here this morning, do you realize that one, two, three, four of the five, is that right? One, two, three. Four of the five parents sets, at least one of the parents were a youth in this church. Yes. Isn't that awesome? And it's not that much a testimony of our leadership, but the Lord's commitment to you to bring up a new generation. I just thought that was amazing to see. <laughs> Don't quit, just go to Praise the Lord. This has been a good day. Yes. I'm going to read one more scripture. But before I do that, I want to say this. Just to introduce communion. In the Christian church, communion is a way that we center ourselves back to the focus on the main things. <coughs> As Christians, we have the opportunity to share in this meal. Not to get full, but because we are full. Because of what God's done for us. So I want to welcome you. If you are a believer, we are making commitments to the Lord today, but also with these young people making a commitment to purity in our lives. Purity is more than just sexual purity. Purity is a commitment to a lifestyle. So what I'm, I'm inviting you, if you're a believer, you're welcome to, to share with us. If you have not received Jesus as, as your Savior and you would like to, you're welcome to receive communion and make that your commitment. But this table is open to any today who, who uh, love the Lord and are, are eager to know Him. And I do want to share one passage that is relevant to what we're doing today. If I get my glasses on with a telephone and a microphone in hand. This is from 1 Thessalonians 4, and I'm going to read 1 through 8. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, I urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God. Amen? And we have taught you. You live this way already, and we encourage you to do so even more. For you remember that we taught you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. God's will is that you be holy. Stay away from all sexual sin, for each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who don't know God and his ways. <coughs> Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife, for the Lord avenges all such sins. As we have solemnly warned you, God has called us to live holy lives, separated lives set apart, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who gives His Holy Spirit to you. The challenge for believers is that God calls us to be separate, to be different. In a world that wants everybody to be the same, they don't want you to be distinct. We've talked about that briefly. But God's calling us to be holy and to be different. So as we come and receive this communion service today, we're remembering what Jesus did for us. In response to what he did for us, we're making a commitment of our own lives that we're going to live for him. And we're looking forward to the day when he comes again. Amen? Amen. The way that we're going to share this service today is I'm getting ready to pray over this meal. These guys are going to help serve, but we would like to invite you, if you're center or on the side over here, to feel free to come down this aisle. They'll serve you the, the bread and, and the cup over here, and then you can return to your seats. And likewise, on this side, if you're center aisle, on this side, you can just feel free to file down and come around. And again, we welcome you to participate with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, that on that night, your God, the last night that you had with your disciples, Lord, you took this bread. And Lord, you lifted it and you spoke of your body that would be broken for us. 
God, we thank you that you didn't hold back, but you gave your all. You didn't consider, consider the price too great, dear God. You considered it a worthy offering. Lord, you showed your love to us when we were unlovely, even when we were in sin, dear God, you still loved us. And God, you believe that the power of your death and resurrection could bring transformation and change in our lives. And God, we thank you for this awesome gift that you've given us. Heavenly Father, we, we also, Lord, recognize that, Lord, you didn't hold back from even sharing your complete and total life. And, Lord, that you shed your blood on our behalf. Scripture confirms in telling us that by the stripes that you bore on your back, that healing was purchased for us. And, God, that salvation flowed to us, dear Lord, God, and was made available to us. So, Lord, we bless this cup. And, God, we pray that you would give spiritual life to those who need it. But, Lord, that those of us who have already committed and are living our lives for you, Lord, that you would live effectively through us, God, that you would manifest your life in the way that we live. So, God, we bless this in Jesus' name. God, I'm, I'm reminded right now, Lord, of people right here in this congregation that need a touch and a healing. God, they need your hand on their life right now. Lord, I... You, Lord, you know those I'm thinking about. I don't want to mention that specific. Lord, I just pray blessings and healing. Through Lord, that you would bring restoration and wholeness to the hearts and lives of people right here. In Jesus' name. Amen. We bless this cup. In Jesus' name. And we have a song that's going to be shared as we receive. Won't you stand with us? And you're welcome to come down and share in the communion service. <laughs> Oh! 